Um, Daryl, first of all, um, just wanted to reflect on the, the sequence of wins that you've had and, and how well you've done in the last few games. Um, what for you, from a manager's perspective, has, has changed or improved in those last three games? Uh, I think the the effort and commitment with, with that added bit of quality, to be honest with you. And that's what you need to win football games. Uh, the first two should be a given, not always. And then you, you're looking for the, the quality to shine through. And, and that's happened in a few games. But I think the work rate gets you there. You know, you, you talk about David Worrell putting that finish in, you know, the third goal that kills the game off. That's, that's pure desire. That's pure work rate. That's, that's not good play. That's somebody wanting to chase a lost cause to get an opportunity to make advantage of a mistake. And that's what I'm talking about. So I think that the hard work and the graft enables you to, to be able to, you know, the look of the rubber, the green go for you. Um, tell us a bit about what some of the staff as well as you've been doing. And I'm thinking in particular of Andy Crosby as well, because I know he's very highly rated, but what, what difference has he made? Well, your backroom team, your support staff, it's your, my job as a manager to make sure that's absolutely spot on and everyone has to be accountable. And, you know, and that's what I'm, I'm going to be building here. Me, me and David are going to be building here that the support staff for a football manager is vital. And now I've, I've never worked with Andy Crosby before, but for me, getting somebody of his experience in is, is vital. And I know thousands of people in football. I could have, I could have put anybody I wanted next to me, the, the, the people that I know, the coaches that I know and, and whatnot. And, but I wanted somebody that I thought was going to be the right fit for the football club, you know, certainly for, the, for obviously for this season. And we'll see how things develop for, for the future. So it's, and it's making sure in your backroom team, you've got those um, right lieutenants, I call them. And that means the, the, the driving machine that comes from me, that comes from my staff, my support staff, to be able to put a product on the pitch that's successful. On the pitch, you've brought Harry McCurdy back into your match day squad. Um, I think it's fair to say he's been a bit unpredictable in the time he's been here. What can you do as a manager to get the best out of a player like that? Yeah, I'm asking him the same self, the same prayer. No, <laughs> Harry McCurdy is a maverick. It's what I call a maverick. Okay, I'm trying to help the kid. I'm trying to support the kid. The kid's got talent without a shadow of doubt, otherwise I wouldn't be even having this conversation or I wouldn't have worked hard to get him in the squad. Because trust me, it was no skin off my nose, OK? But I want to work with him. I want to help him. I want to support him, OK? But that that ball is firmly in his court now. He knows exactly how I feel on things. He knows exactly what I expect of things. And we will see if that opportunity arises. I'm not talking about on the football pitch. I'm talking around the place, on the training ground, everywhere where he needs to improve. OK, I don't have a problem. You know, he's trained absolutely spot on since I've been in the building, as of all the other players. And he needs to find better ways of how he communicates. He needs to find better ways of controlling that aggression, shall we say, or, or... aggression's probably the wrong word, just control controlling a mechanism I think that he's got in his head that enables him not to be uncoachable, if that makes sense. There'll be many of managers and coaches, in my opinion, <clears throat> that'll struggle with Harry unless he learns these attributes, OK? And I've made that crystal clear to him because the kid has talent and he's up to me as a manager. I, I, I want to give it my best shot. <clears throat> I want Harry to give it his best shot for these last final five, six weeks. He's going to have to work hard to get in the team because the team's winning football games, to, to show me that he can potentially be part of the future. So uh, we, we will see how that develops and we'll see how that goes. That That is the big question, isn't it? Because, you know, five, six weeks ago, everybody just said his future at the club was dead as a doornail. But do you now see a way back for him to be I'll, part I'll, of a long-term future? i go back future? to the original time when I come in, what, it's 45 days or so, or whatever, fellow. I'll go back to the original statement that I made. Everybody will start with a clean slate. I ain't interested... OK, I'm not interested in what's previously happened. OK, what previously thoughts on players and previously this, previously this. I'll be judging people of when I've been manager of this football club. I'll be judging my staff when I've been manager of this football club and the, the players. And that's how it's going to be going, going forward. Now, Harry has not been in my thought process. He's not been in my plans. I have been trying to help him because he's an employee of Port Vale. I have been doing my man management with him. 
uh, as of a numerous of players. You know, we've got Dan Trickett Smith as well, who's a young lad who's, who can't be in the squad as well, unfortunately. But as a manager, you've got to man manage every single player and support those players. And uh, but also giving them that clean slate that enables them to 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 prove and show me they're going to be on part of the journey moving forward. Just finally, then, what do you make of those two Easter fixtures? I don't want to put any pressure on you, but I've looked up the stats and Vale haven't won four league games on the trot for 11 years. Vail so pressure. there you go. Listen, there's nobody <laughs> in this building, nobody, anybody can put more pressure on me than I put on myself, ever. So let me get this straight. Listen, I, I expect to win every football game I manage. That's the pressure I put on myself, OK, and the demands I put on myself. So I think it's a pressure that we can certainly look forward to after the last three wins. We've got another good team in Exeter coming coming here on, on Friday, tomorrow. So uh, we look forward to it. I think they'll be in the top seven, but hopefully we can we can take the points. That'll do for me. Thank you, Daryl. Yes, so. Morning, Daryl. Mike, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. you? Yeah, not bad. <coughs> bad. Daryl, you, you mentioned Nathan Smith after his performance last week, and I just wanted to ask you a little bit more about him. How impressed have you been with his... Basically, he's, he's all around performances and what, what he's bringing he's a winner, to the Mike. Team. He's a winner. He's a winner that gives everything for the shirt and everything in training. So with those players, I'll support. I'll support them all the time. If they have bad games, I'll support them. You know, they, 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 I can honestly say when you get a squad of players, you're very, very fortunate to get a certain amount of numbers of what I call genuinely winners. Nathan Smith is that. Nathan Smith is a genuine winner. And I'm fortunate here. I think there's... There's a few of those, to be honest with you. Okay. And that's why I always get my support. I think his form's been good. And with that, you want him to obviously produce quality in his performances. I want to produce him to be a better player. Um, but with, with, within that, you know, he's, he's going to have spells at the football club where he does have lack, lack of form. These are, this is no disrespect, these are League Two players that we're trying to make better players. So, uh, but uh, he's been, been delighted with his, uh, with his contribution. Just talking about another local lad, James Gibbons, we're just wondering how, how, how's he doing and how, how serious is that injury? How, how close is he? He's been on the grass the uh, last couple of days. He's building his fitness levels up and we're hoping he's not going to be too too far away. So he could still play a part this, this season, possibly? Who knows, Mike? Who knows? No, no. <laughs> yes. I, I, listen, let's see. As a massive step back, I think you'll see him sooner rather than later, if I'm honest with yep. you. So we're hoping... We're hoping that's the case. I'll let you know next time you interview me with your enthusiastic questions. Next time you speak <laughs> now, I, I appreciate you've got to get safe first and that'll be the number one priority. But if you can do that sooner rather than later, w w would you then look to experiment and look at plays for next season or is, isn't that something you do particularly? I, I'm just focusing, honestly, my next game. We're not safe yet. We're not out of the woods yet. We're nowhere near out of the woods yet. There's a lot of twists and turns. It's a big weekend of games for us uh, Friday. Monday and we'll assess things as we go along. All I can say is, is we give ourselves a very good platform in these last three games to get the nine points to to, to build from here. And that's the expectations of the of the uh, what I expect of the players to show me that they uh, don't get complacent, that they are going to show me that they can be top three, top seven players in this league over the course of these next eight games. That's that's where I want the players to be thinking and uh, heading. Is that what you're looking to build for next season, that top three or top two right. seven? Yeah, too right. Too right. Listen, I ain't one of those managers that... See, I think... I've come to Port Vale because I don't think there'll be any excuses that why I can't get success here. But I think we'll, I, the Port Vale will give me the best chances. And that, that's not spending silly money, by the way, but I'll get the best chances that I can possibly can to bring success to this football club where there'll be no excuses. OK, and that's the way I wanted it. That's why I came across. And, uh, and hopefully we can do that moving forward. But uh, we've got a big job on our hands in these next eight games. And then we, uh, then we can really start moving it forward of, of where I'd like to take it. Obviously, you've uh, already said, you know, about the commitments and the enthusiasm, <laughs> the work, right, and the efforts. And you said you wanted that touch of quality. You've started to get that now. And I suppose really what you've seen, uh, your forwards midfield are, and the team are asking questions of the opposition. That's the big factor, isn't it? Oh, you get carried away, George, you do, don't you? Nah, listen, the, the lads are grinding it out, aren't they? Let's be honest, we grind it out at Colchester. We won a spectacular game. Crawley was a, probably a better game to watch, better quality. Newport game, 
real good half an hour, then we grind it out. You've got to find ways how to win games at League Two level, chaps. The results, everybody thinks all of a sudden we're playing. No, we, we, we're grinding, we're working hard, we're trying to get a bit of confidence into the lads, which comes with winning football games. So I, I, I always I always assess that way. There's the, the, the fine lines of, and I keep touching, the fine lines of winning professional football games now is so fine. And you need a bit of rubber to green along the way. And uh, we certainly got that with the third goal the other day. How important is continuity then in uh, when you're looking at the team? Uh, you, you're the man that wants continuity each and every week. I'm the tinker that. man, George. There'll be 11 changes tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me straight back then. <laughs> no, no, I'm only kidding, George. Listen, no, definitely. Uh, it's been, it's yeah, Friday, Monday, there'll be a bit, bit, a bit of rotation. I think there needs to be the games come around quick, uh, making sure that the players aren't breaking down with injuries as well. So everything needs to be monitored. But I think it's been, it, it certainly helped over these last few games of having that consistency levels. But to be fair, it would probably been like that a little bit, but I picked up injuries, uh, you know, in these 10 games, picked up injuries, you know, injuries to fullbacks. So uh, Zach Mills out for the season. Uh, Gibbo's been struggling with injuries. Crooksy, Fitzpatrick. Do you get what I'm saying? So we've, yeah. we've yeah. struggled with injuries, certainly in the massively in the fullback areas. Manny's hopefully starting to start getting them uh, match fitness minutes up now. And uh, hopefully we can kick on from here. You've had the versatility within the squad though, uh, Darrell, haven't you really? Players who can double up and utilise the roles which you want them to do. We've seen that Nathan Smith can double across if you require that as a fullback as well, can't he? Yeah, he certainly can. He certainly can. I think the... I think it's helped. If, if I'm going to honest, I think you know, listen, it hasn't been a great return in the 10 games, but really plays of the, the former team in the last three games. But I think it's massively helped the team with a little bit of flexibility within the formations, within the course of the game, or, or just a few little tweaks with the, the personnel to be able to maybe get a game going back in our favour or to secure the points, if that makes sense. So the, the in-game management of the players has been has been, has been been very good over the course of these last three games, and that'll be important moving forward. And Manny, Manny Aliki, of course, uh, has uh, really got back into the type of form which the fans saw when he first joined the club a season or so ago. And he is a quality player at this level, Daryl, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's, he, listen, he, he looks like he's getting better with games, doesn't he, George? So, we, you know, for Manny, he, he'll be keen as mustard to try and make sure, you know, his injury record's not been great this season. So he, he'll know in himself that he'd be keen to make sure that he can play as many games as he possibly can from now to the end of the season. And uh, I'm sure that, you know, that's what he'll be looking at and, and, and myself looking, looking at and, and hopefully he can continue with the, the very good performance he's putting in. You touched on Exeter and of course they've always been there all that about in this league, uh, Daryl, haven't they? Occasionally missed out in the playoffs and the finals, but they are a quality side at this level, aren't they? I think they do it right, Exeter, as a football club. You look at the training facilities, the players they get through the system. I think Matt Taylor is a very good manager, uh, an outstanding manager with, with a good... Uh, and I think he's, he, he'll be a manager for a long time. He's, he's one of the, the managers I admire in this, in this division. And, uh, and, and the football club, you know, the, you look at Ollie Watkins banging in the goals from England, well, he's made in Exeter. They've got a real thirst of making sure that their academy produces players, OK? And, but they do it the right way as, a, as an academy, which uh, we want to start creating that sort of environment in our academy that produces more players. And for yourself, obviously, we're in a pandemic uh, more ways than one, which we know all about that. Hopefully we're coming out you of it. a bit like Boris George, actually, when you're up, <laughs> mate. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you've got Boris's wig there, George, when you're opening us up, lad. No, it's me, it's me. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, you're in the pandemic and hopefully we're going to have a pandemic and uh, hopefully we might get some uh, some fans in before the end of the season. Would you, oh. I suppose we'd all enjoy that team more ways than one day. Oh, that'd be amazing, amazing. Can't wait for our fans to our fans to come back in up and down the country. So, uh, yeah, I'll be looking forward to that moment, George. Or Boris, should I say. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, Daryl. <laughs> Thanks, Have a good one, too. Have a good one, chaps. Keep you entertained. I must be happy. We must have won a few. Take it easy, lads. <laughs>